Right. So to to follow up question, a follow up question I have with that is, has how much do you think the broader sort of campus culture has affected this in the sense that there's a lot of political clashing and sort of ideological things occurring on campus more broadly aside from just this issue. And a lot of research suggests that open dialogue is basically extinct on, on many modern American campuses. And do you think that's, that this is a symptom of that from at least the administrative side of them not doing anything? Or do you think it's more of an issue specific ignorance or maybe co-option by uh, organizations like Confucius Institutes that have contributed to the climate that you're facing? Um, I, I think specifically, um, at least within the case studies that um, we've conducted over this year on all of this university repression and silencing and censorship, we've actually seen that a lot of it is actually, like you said in the latter part of your question, um, coming from these CCP proxies um, and even in Chinese language textbooks, in Chinese language classrooms, courses um, held at American universities, there's a lot of language um, that's very false and kind of demonizes Falun Gong in the exact way that the CCP continues to demonize Falun Gong on like CCTV, Chinese state media. Um, and that's also a concern because you talk about how there's no open dialogue, right? But the students are still going to these classes, trying to learn Mandarin, um, you know, trying to, you know, either pursue business or pursue um, whatever career that they want. And whenever they go to these Chinese language classes, the first thing they hear about, you know, spirituality in China is that, you know, it makes you go mad. Um, you know, Falun Gong forces people to like not eat or, you know, uh, not sleep and all of these um, crazy depictions. And they think of it as true because this is their textbook. The professor is teaching it to them, right? And you would think that in a university, especially in America, that it's, you know, very honest and independent and and truthful. And so I think I wanted to highlight that point. I think it really does come from all of these tactics um, and all of these channels that the CCP is actually um, already installed inside of our universities. Um, right. So, no, go ahead. Go ahead, okay. please. Um, I just have two brief um, thoughts on your question. So one of them was that, um, you know, the thing about open dialogue, um, in our open letter, um, we actually, we address this issue um, that, you know, I think the Falun Dafa Club did a lot to open up that dialogue. We specifically invited the CSSA to the event. We actually invited them to every single one of our human rights screening events, you know, uh, especially after that first instance where they you know, Chinese students complained that we were allowed to advertise in the newsletter, you know, we didn't want any misunderstandings to continue to occur, you know. Um, so we invited them to every human rights film screening event. We specifically invited them to In the Name of Confucius. We also invited <clears throat> the Temple University Confucius Institute to this Confucius Institute event, you know. Our purpose was to open up the dialogue. You know, we're not trying to create, you know, this closed room of just echoing voices of the same opinion. You know, we want to open it up, come to this event, you know, ask critical questions. I think that was in the um, the description, you know, like critical questions are encouraged, you know, like come have a discussion with us. Of course, nobody took up that offer. And then the other thing um, I wanted to mention um, was that, um, sorry, I'm sort of losing my train of thought. Um, I'll uh, if I remember it, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, I think, sorry, I think I would say that, again, there is generally a lack of awareness in terms of the wider problem of transnational oppression. I do think universities know that some of these incidents are happening uh, on their campuses, but they may not necessarily know the wider context context that play. And when they do, when they do actually consider that this is a problem, there may be other factors that contribute to the reluctance to, I guess, defend some of these students more uh, vehemently. I mean, there are financial interests and uh, international partnerships at play that may also 
uh, factor into the, the decision-making process when it comes to responding to these incidents. So I don't necessarily think it's a, I think it's somewhat issue specific in that regard. Right. So, Grady, I have a question for you, and this relates to not only this issue, but transnational repression more broadly. There's been 